It is not any single isolated act which can be called satyagraha apart from the spirit behind. That's from Young India, September 24, 1925. This is a reminder that we need to have uh, frequently that uh, nonviolence or satyagraha is essentially a question of the state of mind, the state of mind primarily of the practitioner. So there are some events that might actually sound pretty violent on the surface, but because they're undertaken for the protection of innocent people and not in a spirit of hatred, they can actually be called nonviolence. What is important uh, is to emphasize that frame of mind. Let's take a drastic situation that there's a, there's a shooter some kind of public space. I have an opportunity to stop that person by using force of some kind. Now, to the extent that it's possible, and that so it could be very difficult, to do it without fear or anger, to do it without a spirit of recrimination, and to ask myself when it's all over, how can we fix the world so these things don't happen anymore? I would call that completely nonviolent action, even though harm, unavoidable harm, was inflicted. However, I think it's important to add <laughs> that in his like 50 plus years of active public work in the eyes of the whole world, Gandhi never found himself in that situation. And <laughs> I never have, I hope I never will. Uh, so it's useful as a theoretical construct to emphasize it nonviolence or its absence really is a matter of the heart. What motivates us? <laughs> <laughs> 